An old and very wise friend of mine passed away just a, a few weeks ago. His name was David Craig and he was a climber, a poet, a Marxist and a professor of creative writing at Lancaster University. I first met David back in the late 80s when I was the editor of uh, Climber magazine and he had just written a book about his own rock climbing experiences, a book that was called Native Stones. Now I have to say David wasn't a, he wasn't a superstar rock climber but I don't think I'd ever met anyone with more enthusiasm for this sport than he had. He was a native of Aberdeen and he came to rock climbing relatively late in life and I think that kind of influenced his writings in Native Stones. In the book there's a, there's a maturity in the writing a maturity so often lacking in similar books. There's no grandstanding, there's no drums, no bugles, no fanfares. There's no macho boasting about grades. It was a book that ordinary climbers could relate to and possibly aspire to. But I think David's real literary contribution was accounts of the, his accounts of the Highland Clearances, a sensitive, heartfelt book called On the Crofters Trail. And that was described by the Times Literary Supplement as a powerful, poetic, personal Highland Odyssey. A few years ago, I walked from Ruahunish and Throtonish through to the, uh, through, well, through the Isle of Skye to, down to Broadford. We were making a television programme called The Sky Trail. And en route, I met up with David and we visited the two cleared villages of Sushnish and Borareg. In this video extract that follows, um, we're walking along the shores of Loch Eishut towards Borarig, and David's empathy with the folk who'd been cleared comes across strongly, as well as his utter fury at those who carried out the vile, vicious attacks on peaceful crofters. So this YouTube video is dedicated to my good friend, Professor David Craig. From here I'm heading south to the cleared villages of Sushanish and Borarig. Till the mid 19th century, these were both thriving communities. Then the landlords decided they could make more money by removing the people and bringing in sheep instead. I've been looking forward to meeting up with an old friend and an expert in the Highland Clearances, David Craig. David spent many years seeking out the stories of the evicted people. He achieved what many thought was impossible. By delving into the memories of the descendants of the cleared people, he established an oral history of that cruel period. It's been a while since David was last here, and as we made our way east along the coast to Borarig, it was quite obvious that he was still very emotional about what he'd heard. In Mull, I met a woman called Mary Morrison. Uh, this was 20 years ago, I hope she's still alive. And um, she was told the story of the Borough Clearance by her father. When they came in and they cleared the people and their gear out, and of course the basins were standing ready to make the butter. Well, they extinguished the fires, which might have been in the middle of the floor or in the hearth, by pouring the family stock of milk onto the fires. Putting out fires with milk. It makes me squirm to think of it. Even the smell of it must have been horrendous. That's right, you know the smell of burnt milk, the pan boils over it. It certainly went on up in Sushnish too, we've come through, because um, the postman at Cheng some years ago, Alistair McKinnon, told me about his grandmother Robertson. And they were evicted from Sushnish and walked out through Borarig and walked on by the loch side. And um, he says the state officers put us out with the usual cruelty, burning the roofs to make the houses uninhabitable so we could not come back, and pouring the basins of milk outside. And she had told her little grandson uh, that m my mother shed more tears that night than we got milk from the cows. This is the first of the houses I see ahead of us, David. Oh, that's it. This is the frontier. It feels like a frontier. 
It does indeed, doesn't it? You know, that horrible black rock has finished and we're in the healthy brown rock again. <laughs> I call this the start of Butter Egg. And there'll be more houses to see once we get up there. So Piles and South have been here and everything is always bigger than you remembered. Well, this is five times as big as I remember. It's what I call a cradle of civilization. You just enter into it and you suddenly feel easy. You've arrived, you know, and there's a bit of shelter and a bit of grass and the sense of calm and of well-being that comes into you yeah. at such a moment as that. Today, these villages are deserted, but once they were teeming with life. Children played here, people were born here, people died here, there was laughter and no doubt tears, just like any other village in Scotland. Everything was going on here, and for all they knew in the 1840s, it was going to go on going on here. I mean, they were building a super track up the hill there, and they used to get their mail left under a stone up on the hill for them. So, they were building a future. The place as, was as likely to have a future as not, as like any village we live in today. And, and then, bang! Who, who can tell how well they'd have gone on living in Burraig had they not been cleared? But by the look of it, there's a lot of room, and a lot of arable ground, and a lot of room for beasts. And we know there is good fishing, because that rock out there is the big bulge is still used as a landmark by the lobster fishermen. So it's a place that is got a lot of resources for life. Who knows what it would have been like? Just the manner of the clearing was so harsh that it's hard to think of. You, you visited many clear villages throughout the Highlands. How significant is Borrowrig and, and Sushnish compared to all these other? Well, I think there's so much visible, so much in the way of building and good building and a spaciousness in both the places. The, the, the best historian of the clearances is called Eric Richards, an Australian professor. He says it was a bleak place. It's, well, it's a matter of taste. <laughs> you know, it's not Bournemouth. <laughs> it's, it's not Sochi Hall Street. Um, is it bleak? It would look less bleak if there were potatoes and oats growing and kale and carrots and if there were children running about. When you wrote your book on the Crofters Trail, you spoke to descendants of the people who were cleared. How emotional experience was that? Well, it sort of harrowed me and made my blood boil. At least if the story is passed on, we've got pieces of the life that were lived. <laughs> 